executive functioning. Executive functioning is not a terminology specific to autism. Quite frankly, it has nothing at all to do with autism. We all take on executive functioning skills on a daily basis. And executive functioning simply means you have a mapped out routine. You know when you wake up in the morning, when your alarm clock goes off, there are certain things you need to do in order to get to work. And there could be a hundred things in between. If you have kids, if you have pets, if you have a husband that needs waking up, or a wife for that matter that needs waking up. These are all things that you have to do. This is all a route that you have to take in order to get to a certain point. You need to get dressed. You need to make a lunch. You need to make your coffee. You need to check email. Whatever it is that your particular routine dictates of you on any given day, that's executive functioning. You know that in order to get to point B from point A, certain sequences need to take effect, and in between, certain things need to be accomplished, and any deviation can cause you to be late. And sometimes that's just a car accident on the way to work. It's not, sometimes not even a fault of your own. Sometimes you've done everything correctly and everything properly, but something somewhere gets in the way of you getting to where you need to be on time. Our children with autism have tremendous difficulties doing that. How many of your students get to the front door of your classroom and just stand there and don't know to go into the classroom and certainly don't know once they're in the classroom where they're then supposed to go? They need help and direction every step of the way. Because for a lot of our children with autism, putting that sequential order into action is extremely difficult. But we tell our children, go hang up your jacket, go sit at your desk, and get out your notebook. That's a lot to expect of some of our children. That's a tremendous amount of sequencing. And beyond just the physical act of completing those three activities, there's also an expectation in there that our child is listening to us, right? <laughs> There's also sometimes an expectation, and not always the best expectation, that our child is looking at us. This is age old. I want everybody to forget about the notion that if a child's not looking at you, they're somehow disrespectful. It's age old. It, 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 it should go the way of the dodo. Specifically in regards to our children with autism. A child with autism, when told to look at you, may exactly be doing that. And then when you incorporate other directions and they don't follow those directions, it's because they're what? They're looking at you. Exactly. Because that is the first direction that you requested of the child. Anything after that, because of their lack of executive functioning skills, were not processed. Say it louder. Processed. processed. Exactly. Does that make sense? So how do, we, how do we address that? Do we address that punitively? Is our child not listening to us? No, of course not. Our child is simply not able to process all the directions that we're requesting of them. And there are so many wonderful, beautiful, visual, exciting ways that we can put those sequences in, in, in order. Um, we don't have a schedule in here, but next week, not today, you can come and see some of the visual schedules that we put into practice for some of our students. And a visual schedule, depending on how your child is going to receive it, could be something as simple as first and then. It could be a half day schedule. It could be a full day schedule. It could be a week long schedule. I once had a student that had magnetic paint and a month long schedule on the wall in his bedroom. And his parents had a bunch of icons that his mom actually glued magnets to the back of. And all these icons for the whole month dictated what his schedule was going to look like. It's a wonderful way to address the lack of executive functioning skills within our kids. Incorporate those skills.